Take a deep breath. I know you're freaking out because this sponsorship contract is really confusing, but the brand can't smell your fear. Actually. Nah, we're good. Keep your head down, follow my lead, and don't make these 12 mistakes. Deal? Number one, signing the agreement as the wrong party. There are two main places on sponsorship agreements where you are referenced. Usually in the very first paragraph where it says something like, this agreement is entered into by and between the agency on behalf of its client, the brand, and you, the influencer. You need to make sure that the entity they're referencing is correct. If you have a legal structure for your creator business, like an LLC or an S Corp, then that needs to be listed as the party and signatory instead of your name. The main reason why relates to you getting paid. So if you were about to click out of this video, stop it. When the brand cuts the check to you, they're gonna cut it to whomever was the party of the agreement and who's listed on the invoice. And you should be receiving all of this money from being a creator into your business accounts. The other reason is if you ever get sued by a follower who used the shampoo that you recommended in your sponsored post and their hair fell out, they can't come after your personal assets. Mistake number two, not checking if the deliverables match what was agreed to. This section of an agreement, which is sometimes called the statement of work or the services, outlines exactly what you're committing to do for the partnership. If you've ever been in a negotiation that has gone back and forth a bunch of times, it's very common for brands to make mistakes when listing out your responsibilities. Especially if they're working with 30 or 40 other influencers on this campaign and everyone is doing different things, I'm just gonna say it. Their copy and paste skills kind of suck. suck. But you know what sucks more? When you don't check that stuff and agree to twice as much work. Now, hopefully if a brand realized the mistake, they would correct it even after you had signed the deal. But I've also heard of situations where brands kind of wiped their hands and said, sorry, this is what the contract says. So take two minutes and at the very least, make sure that whether it's an integrated YouTube video or one Instagram reel or one TikTok, both you and the brand are crystal clear about what you're gonna deliver. Mistake number three, not spelling out the number of rounds of revision. You work with brands on sponsored campaigns, 99% of the time, they're gonna wanna see a draft of the content before it goes live. The reason that they do this is so that they have the opportunity to provide feedback and request edits to the content in case the way in which you talked about the brand was wrong. Or maybe you were dripping in third-party logos, blasting your favorite copyrighted music. First of all, it's a normal and reasonable thing for the brand to ask for a preview. However, what's not normal and not reasonable is for the brand to ask for unlimited rounds of revisions. One round is expected and the max should be two. The brand might try and say things like, well, we need unlimited revisions because we need to make sure that everything is perfect before it goes live. And this right here is the reason that you must make a distinction between edits and reshoots. Edits are simple cuts to a video or an easy update to a caption that you propose. The brand can't just say, oh, well, you know, we didn't like the color shirt you were wearing, so you need to reshoot the whole thing. Sorry, not gonna happen. That's why you need to always request language like influencer agrees to up to two rounds of re-edits. However, reshoots are only permitted if influencer substantially deviates from the approved creative brief and approved concept. Should additional rounds of re-edits or reshoots be required, incremental compensation will be mutually negotiated. Mistake number four, not clarifying what the term of the partnership is. Sometimes brands or agencies will sneakily try to extend the duration of the agreement much longer than you expected. Or even worse, the term will be left open-ended. It will say something like, oh, this agreement will persist until canceled by both parties upon 30 days written notice. No, this is a finite partnership. If there's not a clause spelling that out, ask them to add it. Mistake number five, not determining 
determining the usage rights for the partnership. Do you own the content or does the brand? Typically, the creator should always own it and provide a non-exclusive license to the brand for a certain duration. If the brand wants to outright own your content, which is sometimes called a work for hire relationship, that should cost more. This might seem like a minor detail, but the reason this is so critical is because if you're gonna be posting this content on your platform, the brand has very little control to actually force you to do anything if at a later date they chose to do that. Sometimes brands make really weird decisions, like their legal team just decides that they want you to remove the post three months later. If they're dead set on owning it so that they can put it on their website and repurpose it in a bunch of different ways, they have to pay for that privilege. So if a brand ever says to you, well, Owning the content is just how we always do things. Well, you can say, I'm very happy for you, but that requires a different investment. Mistake number six, not clarifying whether the brand wants to use your content for paid media. Here's a clause from a real contract so you can see what this looks like. Agency and marketer reserve the right to put advertising support behind owned social media posts featuring influencer content for 30 days. Agency can also utilize paid support for influencer social posts that are created through this agreement via whitelisting for 30 days after each post is live on influencers feed. If you see anything that sounds like that, they're going to put a bunch more money beyond what they're paying you to amplify your content to a much wider audience. I can't tell you how many stories I've heard of creators getting super excited about working with a particular brand and they just signed the agreement without reading it and then saw their content being used as ads for the next three years. Don't you think they should have paid you more than a hundred bucks for that? Mistake number seven, not searching the entire contract for the words perpetual or perpetuity. Like seriously, right now, bring up a contract, control F on a PC or what is it, command F on a Mac, right? For perpetual and perpetuity. So what does that mean? Well, perpetual means forever. Unless you're pledging your undying love to my incredibly helpful YouTube channel, don't grant anyone anything forever. Mistake number eight, not clarifying with the brand the exclusivity terms. Most of the time when you partner with the brand, they're gonna want you to not talk about their competitors for a certain time period. First of all, pretty reasonable of them. It looks pretty dumb if you talk about another brand in the same category two days later. It also makes you look bad to your audience. Don't do that. However, what you must absolutely do is clarify how long the brand is going to require you to be exclusive and exactly what the category will be. For example, if a major potato chip brand approaches you about a partnership and says they want exclusivity, you can say, well, for how long and whom do you consider your competitors? If they say any other brand that makes products for human consumption, well, I'm sorry I don't consider bananas competitive to potato chips. And I'm pretty sure Chiquita is about to hit me up, so we're gonna need to figure something out here. But for real, it's not enough for them to say any competitors of our brand. You need a specific list of companies so that there's absolutely no question as to who is off limits. Mistake number nine, not clarifying the payment terms. A lot of creators think that brands are just gonna PayPal them the money within a few hours of the post going up. The vast majority of the time, brands have a very stringent accounts payable process where they're gonna require you to submit things like invoices and tax paperwork and vendor paperwork. Not only that, they'll have a standard net payment term that all outside partners must adhere to, such as net 30 or net 60, which means 30 to 60 calendar days until you get paid. So if you're banking on this deal to get your next potato chip slash banana fix, pretty important to know. Mistake number 10 is not asking for 50% of the compensation upfront. Well, rather upon execution of the agreement at the standard payment terms and the balance upon completion of services, which is after you make all the posts. Especially since some campaigns can take several months from start to finish, it kind of sucks having to wait four or five months to actually get paid. So the least they can do is throw you a bone or I mean, half the bone. Mistake number 11 is not asking for mutual indemnification and limitation of liability. A lot of brands will have these clauses where they say things like, influencer will indemnify and hold harmless our brand against all liability to third parties arising from or in connection with influencers material uncured breach of this agreement. But what that should actually say is each 
party will indemnify and hold harmless the other party against all liability to third parties, yada, yada. Why are they the only ones who get to be protected? No, you get to be protected too. And it's perfectly reasonable to ask them for that. Again, remember the shampoo follower whose hair fell out? I mean, that's bald, I mean, I mean bad, but that's not your fault, that's the brands. So don't let them off the hook. And mistake number 12, not having language that governs termination. I've been doing sponsorships for a long time, and the reality is that sometimes brands change their mind even after the contract is signed. The last thing that you want is to have done a bunch of work for the partnership, and then the brand pulls the rug out and says, well, well, sorry, it says right here in the agreement that we can cancel this contract in our sole discretion for any reason, and there's nothing you can do about it. I'm sorry, <laughs> sorry. First of all, not cool. Second of all, Seriously, what's with this brand? Third of all, that's what the contract says. So instead of unleashing the Terminator on them, I'll be back. Just insert language into the termination clause that says they have to pay you a prorated amount if they cancel the partnership halfway through. So look, we're not done here. Watch this video where I talk about five sponsorship pricing mistakes you need to stop making right now. So just click the video.